Well, hey guys, in today's video, I'm gonna give you my top 10 reasons why your sunscreen is not working. I get a lot of comments here on YouTube, over on my Instagram, and I see this in sunscreen product reviews online all the time. I used this sunscreen and it didn't work. I still got a burn, it, you know, it didn't work. In today's video, I'm gonna give you the 10 most common reasons why this may have happened. The number one reason, probably the most common reason why your sunscreen did not work out for you is that you did not apply enough. Don't beat yourself up because we are pretty much all guilty of this. It's actually really difficult to apply enough sunscreen to achieve the stated level of protection on the bottle. That SPF number, in order to get to that number of protection, that level of protection, you have to apply sunscreen at a density of two milligrams per centimeter squared of surface area. That's a lot. It's really challenging to do that comfortably. I have a few tips. When you're applying sunscreen to your body, say for a day at the beach, you wanna aim for about an ounce, which is roughly a shot glass worth of sunscreen. But really important is make sure that you are spreading it out evenly on the surface of the skin. You're not getting any skip areas. This is a common reason to also burn is that you think you're getting it on, but you're skipping a lot of areas. The other tip is to actually choose a sunscreen with a higher SPF. Now, I wanna make it crystal clear, SPF 50 is not that different from SPF 70, from SPF 100 on paper, but in real world use, because of this issue that we all have of not being able to really apply enough, of under applying, it turns out in real world use, choosing a sunscreen with a higher SPF ends up protecting you better from a sunburn. So if you're gonna be especially out all day, doing something outdoors, then choose a sunscreen with a higher SPF. They make them as high as SPF 100. Reason number two, your sunscreen did not work out for you is that you did not reapply it. This is a really common sticking point for a lot of people. They're okay putting sunscreen on, but when you tell them they have to reapply it, they're like, really, again? Yes, it is very important that you re reapply sunscreen. If you're gonna be outdoors, you wanna aim to reapply sunscreen every two hours while you're outside. Now, on a given day where you're mostly indoors, it's still a good idea to try and at least reapply your sunscreen one to two times throughout the day. Why do you need to reapply? You need to reapply sunscreen because no matter what the marketing tells you, it will rub off with sweat, motion, and if you're outdoors participating in water sports, when you get in the water and out, you're losing sunscreen, so it's really important to reapply it. But the main reason to reapply sunscreen is to help you out in that issue that we mentioned earlier of under applying it to begin with. Turns out that if you are really good about applying another layer, then you're gonna get more sunscreen deposited on the surface of your skin to compensate for that initial under application. So you are getting closer and closer to the stated SPF on the bottle by simply reapplying it. Reason number three is that the product you are using is not a broad spectrum sunscreen. This is a common problem that people who rely on makeup with SPF fall into. They think, oh, I'm wearing an SPF makeup or a moisturizer with SPF, that should be good, right? You wanna make sure that the product you are using to protect your skin is labeled broad spectrum because things that are just labeled as SPF they may only have ingredients that protect you from some parts of the sun, not all of the UV rays. And so a sunscreen needs to be broad spectrum, meaning it will protect you not only from the burning UVB rays that are reflected in SPF, but they also protect you from those UVA rays that penetrate deeply and damage collagen, lead to premature skin aging, set you up for risk for skin cancer, and exacerbate issues like melasma, hyperpigmentation, so if you're somebody who deals with melasma, for example, and you're like, I've been wearing this sunscreen and my melasma is not getting any better, make sure that your sunscreen is broad spectrum and it's protecting you from those UVA rays. Reason number four, your sunscreen has failed you is that you are getting too many skip areas. And this is a lot more common if you're relying on a spray or a stick or a powder sunscreen because they don't, reliably put down an even film of sunscreen on the surface of the skin, they're a lot more prone to skip areas. With the sprays, if you're spraying the sunscreen while you're outside, the wind can move the sunscreen particles out into the air and they don't end up on your skin. With sticks, depending on the size of the stick, you may not realize that you're getting some skip areas. And then with powders, 
powders really do not do a good job at all of putting down an even film. So if you're only allow if you're only relying on a powder, you're going to get a lot of skip areas. If you're using sprays and sticks, once you apply them, make sure you rub it in to ensure that you get good coverage and do multiple coats to make sure you're not getting those skip areas. I like sprays and sticks. They are a lot more convenient. I love powders for touch-ups, but realize these pitfalls of these different forms of sunscreen that they're more prone to skip areas. You need to rub them in. And in the case of powders, you need to rely at least on a base layer of a regular cream or lotion sunscreen. Reason number five is that Honestly, you just stayed out in the sun too long. I think people feel as though if they put sunscreen on, it is a license to just be out there in the sun all the time. Sunscreen, it helps reduce the overall amount of UV damage to the skin, but it's not a foolproof metric whatsoever. You really need to rein in other behaviors and not staying out too long is one of those behaviors, especially during peak sun exposure times. Midday sun, if you're staying out, without any additional sun protection beyond just your sunscreen, don't expect it's gonna do all this work for you. Uh, so be mindful of your UV exposure and make sure you're not staying out too long. You can still get a burn even if you're wearing sunscreen if you stay out too long. And you can still get a lot of UV damage from staying out too long in midday sun exposure even with sunscreen on. Of course, sunscreen's gonna help mitigate some of that, but it's not going to remove all risk. Number six is that you did not seek shade. Shade is a really important part of the sun protection behaviors. Again, sunscreen is not a shield of armor. And I think where people really can run into trouble is that they will be at the beach, for example, in a bikini, and they've been really good about putting sunscreen on, but they're walking on the beach all day with no other type of sun protection, no shade, no hats, no sun protective clothing, no umbrellas, no sunglasses. That is like trying to that is like trying to stop diarrhea with a band-aid. It's not going to be enough. That's like trying to stop explosive diarrhea with a band-aid. It's not enough. Again, sunscreen, it's great, it's helpful, it reduces overall burden of UV damage, but it's just one small piece. You wouldn't get behind the wheel of a car, buckle your seatbelt, get on the interstate with a blood alcohol level two times the legal limit. A seatbelt mm, is not enough. <laughs> Reason number seven is that you are putting sunscreen on in a hurry. Studies show that people who take their time are more likely to get to the stated SPF as opposed to people who rush through. Rushing through makes it more likely that you're gonna skip areas and you're gonna underapply. A lot of people hyper-focus on the volume of sunscreen needed, the teaspoons or whatever, and then they just rush through applying it. So take your time. Single-handedly, sunscreen is the most important piece of your skincare routine, so take your time. You can have this elaborate skincare routine with all of these serums, massaging up and down or whatever. None of that matters if you're not taking your time to put the sunscreen on properly. Reason number eight is you're not in the habit of applying sunscreen. People who intermittently use sunscreen, maybe only when they go to the beach, they're gonna be outside all day, they're less likely to get a good amount of sunscreen on. Studies show that people who wear sunscreen daily, as opposed to people who just use it intermittently, overall have less UV damage. So being in the habit is really an important thing. This is why I always emphasize the need to wear sunscreen on a daily basis, even if you're gonna be mostly indoors. Of course, UVA rays come through window glass and all that stuff we've talked about in my other videos on why you need sunscreen inside, but it's beyond that. You need it because it's a habit, and that habit actually serves the health of your skin long-term in many ways, just beyond protecting you from a burn here and there. Reason number nine is that your sunscreen has expired. A lot of people don't realize this, but sunscreen does in fact have an expiration date. Chemical sunscreens, for example, are good for about three years, after which I would not recommend using them. Mineral sunscreens also have an expiration date that will vary based on some of the other ingredients in the product. So always check that expiration date and dispose of sunscreens that have passed the expiration date. Extremes of temperature also can compromise the efficacy of sunscreen ingredients. I always recommend not storing your sunscreen in a hot car because this can potentially degrade the filters and the sunscreen, compromising its efficacy. If you're gonna be at the beach and it's really hot out, make sure you take a little cooler with you to store your sunscreen in to keep it out of the heat. 
And last but not least, reason number 10 that your sunscreen failed is that you're allergic to something in the sunscreen. This isn't very common, but it does happen. You can be allergic to the active ingredients in sunscreens like the filters that protect you from UV. Most commonly, that's gonna be the filter oxybenzone. Or you can be allergic to one of the inactive ingredients, something like fragrance or a certain preservative. There's a type of allergy that can happen to sunscreen called a photoallergy, meaning that you're allergic to an ingredient but specifically, the allergy manifests when the ingredient comes in contact with your skin plus exposure to UV rays from the sun. So you get a bad rash, and that is known as a photocontact allergy. Now, if you think this may be happening, I suggest choosing a mineral sunscreen with zinc oxide. These are not likely to cause allergy at all, and they tend to be very gentle on the skin. And I do suggest seeing a board-certified dermatologist because then patch testing can be performed and photo patch testing to determine what ingredient is, if any, that you are allergic to. And then you can choose sunscreens that are free of that allergen. All right, you guys, those are the 10 most common reasons that sunscreen may have failed you. Now, thank you so much for putting up with whatever the quality of this video is. I am currently without power, so I don't have any of my lighting and my typical tools at my disposal for editing. So I'm just gonna kind of put this together on my phone and hope that I can get all of the things that I normally include in the video. So thank you for your patience. I hope you enjoyed this. Now on the end slate will be my video all about sunscreen allergy. So check that out. But if you like this, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends. And as always, don't forget sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.